Whether you're an adrenaline junkie or just looking for a challenge with a difference, a rap jump could be just the experience you're looking for. I'm Joanne and I'm here with Paul Shivers from Rap Jump Australia. Thank you Paul. How are you? Good. It's good. So Paul, can you tell the viewers what the sport of rap jumping is? Okay, um, rap jumping, it's originated from um, like uh, special service services where they used to assault um, a building straight, straight forward. So um, that was 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Um, so they would actually come down face forward on a rope, a single rope, um, using a friction device, mm -hmm. um, all the way to the ground. So we've um, developed a little bit further and put in some secondary safety systems and um, created lots of fun so for the general public. Remodified it to yeah. make it into a fun sport. Yeah. That, you know. Is there a minimum age requirement? Uh, you're looking at around 12, and it's, it's due to their the weight of someone. So um, they're really quite light. It creates a lot of friction. Okay. They move quite slow. So we, we tend to say around about 12 years and up. And do you cater for all people? Yep, all ages. I think our oldest was 72. Um, and wow. um, all ages, men, women, kids. Yep. Um, it's a lot of fun. And people with disabilities? Yep, um, our centre in Sydney um, is an indoor environment um, where we can control a lot more things, a lot smaller. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of groups in. Aside from Brisbane, where else in Australia can you do a rap jump? Um, we've done um, programs and promotions um, in different locations all over Australia. Um, our bases are in Sydney and Brisbane. Um, we've done programs overseas as well. How often do you offer this type of jump? Um, we offer, operate um, in Brisbane on the last weekend of every month on a Sunday. Right. And uh, in Sydney it's offering all the time. This uh, is in Brisbane. It's uh, at Roma Street, the Holiday Inn. Mm -hmm and uh, it's about 70 metres, so uh, it's pretty big. What's the highest building you've jumped from? Um, just recently in Shanghai, it was about 160 metres, so uh, a lot of fun, um, very high, very windy. Having a fear of heights and this being my first assignment, I was more than a little nervous about being on top of an 18-storey building. Yeah, we that's this what worries about me. What I didn't know was that the boys had set me up for my own rap jump. That's all right. <laughs> oh no. meters straight down. I was petrified. G'day and welcome to the Wild Weekend Cooking segment. Today we're going to make a classic dish. It's a seafood creole, originally a scallop creole, but we're going to add some seafood, a little bit of prawns. Um, this is a great dish if you're going to cook for two people or ten people. It takes about the same time. We're also going to give you a few tips on how to cook rice without ending up with a big stodgy mess. Okay, let's get started. 
Now the first thing you need to do is cook the rice. That's gonna take about 15 minutes. Now, we're gonna cook for three people today. So you'll need one cup of rice and two and a half cups of water. And what we'll do, we'll bring the water to the boil before we add the rice. Okay, now we've got the water up to the boil and we're gonna add the rice. We'll give it a little bit of a stir. And what we're gonna do now is bring the water back to the boil. Now we're gonna turn it right down low and we're gonna leave it for 15 minutes. Now that's the trick. Don't touch it, just leave it for 15 minutes. Okay, now while the rice is cooking, we can start the Creole. Now to do the Creole, you'll need some onions, we'll need some diced tomato, we'll need a little bit of garlic, uh, some shallots, seafood of course, we've got coconut milk, fresh cream, a little bit of curry powder, and a little bit of white wine. Okay, let's get cooking. Okay, now firstly, we're gonna fry the onions, and we wanna fry the onions until you get a little bit of color. Okay, then we're gonna add the tomatoes and the seafood, and we'll cook them for about one to two minutes. Add the tomatoes. Then we're gonna add the curry powder and cook for another one to two minutes. Although if you've got a lot more seafood, you may need to cook this a little bit longer. Okay, now that's frying up nicely. Next we're going to add some white wine to get all the flavours from the pan. And cook that for a couple of minutes. Okay, the next step is we're going to add some fresh cream and some coconut milk. And we're going to cook that for about four or five minutes and I'll be just about ready to serve. I've got the rice on the plate, I've got some garlic bread. All we've got to do now is add the Creole. The seafood Creole with some jasmine rice and lovely crisp garlic bread. What do you think Mick? Want to come and have a try? I can't believe it. Seafood Creole, a la Phil. This has got to be good. Guys, if only this was smell vision because this is absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Phil. Mm. Mm. Hi, I'm Stan Rogers from the Gold Coast Four Wheel Drive Club. One of the main ports of four wheel driving is what we call the hill stall recovery. This procedure is used when you are ascending a hill and for whatever reason you can't proceed any further and you need to stall the vehicle or stop the vehicle and reverse back down the hill. To do this, all you do is take your foot off the accelerator, put your foot onto the brake pedal and stall the vehicle. From here, the next thing you do is to turn the ignition to the off position. Don't turn it to the lock, because if you turn it to the lock, then you may not be able to get your steering lock undone. Once you've done that, you apply the handbrake, and from this, you have three things holding you on the hill. The car is stalled in gear, you have your foot on the foot brake, and you have your handbrake applied. Calm yourself down, think about how you got here, why you're here, and what's caused the problem. You then look behind the vehicle, have a look behind you to see what's behind down the track, see where the hill is, where the bank is, where the wheel ruts are, trees, uh, people, 
Once you've done that, you do a visual check of your front wheels to make sure that they are physically pointing in the right direction. From here, you put your foot on the clutch and you select reverse gear. It is very important to make sure that the car has engaged in, first, in reverse gear properly and uh, because that will be the only thing that's holding you on the hill. Once you're sure of that, you remove your foot from the clutch, release your handbrake and slowly release your foot brake. Now as you release your foot brake, the vehicle will move as all the gear train takes up any slack that's in the gear train. You then look behind, through the centre of the vehicle preferably, and as you're looking behind, you turn the key to the start position and the vehicle will start with you being in control of the vehicle, progress down the hill slowly.